We know that the sheep eaters, the mountain Shoshone, and the mountain crow, and a segment of the Nez Pierce made the horn bows. We don't know how they first come to it, but, but we know that they did. We also know that they lived in Yellowstone Park or the Yellowstone ecosystem, which uh, is, is larger than the park itself. But the, one of the important features of Yellowstone ecosystem is the hot springs. And we know that they had to utilize the hot springs to soften these horns up in order to make the bow. Once, once we get the back cut off, we got, we got to work the outside down, get it down where it looks just exactly like this here, nice and smooth, uh, all, all the uh, surface cracks out of it. And then I instinctively realized that in order to have a bow of any worth, I had to reverse the curve. Uh, the horn will get sufficiently soft that you can actually pull it out straight. And what I would do is I would reach in there, get a hold of my horn, and pull on it. And when I can finally pull it out uh, without a whole lot of stress, then I would, uh, the very first time I ever did it, I tied it to a, like a straight stick. Uh, and, and I imagine that the Indians, uh, the sheep beaters, probably would have gotten a, like a, a, a straight pole or something and, and pulled it out and lashed it down. The thing you got to remember when you're making it is that if it's going to take you a couple of weeks to get it soft enough to, to straighten out, it's going to take about that much time or more to get it thoroughly dried out again. We've, we've, we've worked it down, we're, we're nice and thin, and I've straightened it up and it looks like this right here, more or less. All right, now that we've got that all done, established, uh, what we have to do, we have to take both, both horns and we have to splice them together, just like I'm showing you right here. Let me get that over here so that we can, uh, <laughs> we can show you. We have, to, uh, we have to splice them together. Once you get your glue made, then you're ready to glue this splice together. All right, in the, in the very beginning, I didn't have modern C clamps. I didn't have any of that stuff, so I tied mine together. Worked perfect. Well, and then as I went along, I finally got, you know, I got rich enough to get a couple C clamps and this and that, and boy, I thought I'm right up town. So I, the next bow I made, I got my splice already, and I put that glue in there, and I, I really clamped them buggers together. I mean, I was proud of myself. I put the torque on them suckers. I let it dry. I took it apart, and it fell right apart. I had squeezed all the glue right out. <laughs> so when I tell you I learned everything the hard way, I'm not kidding you. So the point being, either tie it together firmly, if you're going to use C clamps, just put enough torque on it to hold it. Don't get carried away. Otherwise, it's not going to hold. All right, so now we've got it glued together. And, and what I did, I put a little bitty plate. I make a, a, a bone plate that I put down there. All right, now we've got the horn bow, we've got the sinew, we've got it broke down, and we're ready to go. All right, we've got to heat the glue back up. And you don't want to boil it. You want to get it just nice and warm. Uh, you know, and it, actually it'll be uh, where it's uncomfortable to stick your hand in it. I like to have it in about the consistency of a carol syrup. All right, and then we've got it all ready to go. And so then I'll start my gluing process. The thing of it is, you can take a horn bow, and you can glue the sinew on. And I, I glue it simultaneously. In other words, I'll start like maybe here in the middle and I'll glue this way. I'll go all the way across and then I'll start and I'll come back <coughs> this way. All right, well, that's the first layer. All right, now, let's just say you're gonna put three or four or five layers on. If you started in the middle of the bow, you have got to alternate your splices. So I'll come and I'll start clear over here on this side and I'll go as far as I can, overlap it and finish. I'll finish that whole side that way, and then I'll come back over here and I'll start on this side of my handle, and I'll do the same thing, come out, and overlap, and finish. And like I said, uh, with this bow right here, this bow right here 
probably is in the neighborhood, and I haven't checked it lately, but it's in the neighborhood of 60, 65 pound draw. It's got, and I don't remember when, how much now, it's probably got either four or five layers of sinew on it. I put them all on simultaneously. In other words, when I start gluing my sinew, I don't stop until I'm done. Always alternating the, the splices. Anyway, once you have gotten to that stage where, where you, you, you can string it up and you can start flexing it, then you have to tiller the bow. Tillering the bow is nothing more than scraping it down to balance it. All right, now let me just show you here. I'm going to use my pocket knife, but you can use a, a piece of, say, like obsidian, uh, church, uh, flint, anything that's sharp. Now this particular bow here I have just made, and I, I can see right off that I'm going to have to I'm going to have to uh, uh, I'm going to have to tiller it just a little bit more, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Now see that it's bending more right here. See that it's, it's bending more here than it is here. Now if I pull on that, it, it'll it'll come up, and if I do it long enough, it'll it'll eventually get even. But but I uh, I've been working this bow long enough that I'm I'm going to have to take a little bit more off right here. So what I do is, I'll take my knife, and you got to be careful, especially if you've got it strung up. And I'm going to do this with the string on it. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll sit right here, like this here, and, and I'll take my knife, and I'll just start scraping right there. Just, you're just taking them little shavings off, and you just keep it doing that. And the thing is now, when I, what I tell people is, you've got to tiller it a little and shoot it a lot. This bow here is new enough and then I know I need to go just a little bit more on this side. But I finally learned over the years that I, I would get them to where I was pretty sure I had them balanced and then quit worrying about it. Uh, in the beginning I used to lose a lot of sleep <coughs> worrying about bows. Uh, I don't worry so much anymore. Uh, the main thing is, if you're going to make one of these horn bows, uh, you got to have uh, lots of patience, lots of pers perseverance, and uh, uh, if you got somebody and you can pick their brain, why well, go pick their brain? And and uh, uh, I recommend you start on a set of domestic horns. They don't cost as much as sheep horns do. A lot easier to get a hold of. And you notice I I, I don't I don't pull the bow. Like modern techniques, you pull the bow and you hold. You, you can't shoot a, a, a Native American bow that way. They're too short, so you just pull and shoot. We'll do it again. Anybody that wants photos, why? Uh, and if you want, I, I can maybe try to hold just a second. Would that help You're you? You're pretty fast. Well, yeah. Tell me when you got your picture. Got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>